This happened during a road trip I was taking on the way back from seeing my family for the holidays. I'm not usually one to drive for more than a couple of hours because I much prefer flying myself. But this year, the tickets to where I was going were way more expensive for some reason. It would have cost me over 1,000 bucks for a round trip flight that only went a few states over. I had planned everything out so I'd get home a few days before I had to go to work again. But a snowstorm blew in on the day I was going to leave. So I had to stay an extra two days before I could finally start driving. The roads were empty since it was past the holiday rush. And most of the drive was pretty out of the way from the big cities and stuff. The hardest part of it really was always staying awake and fighting the boredom. The first eight or so hours went by without much trouble, really. I sure was tired, though, but the snow on the road kept me awake and attentive. It was around 1 p.m., and I had a hotel booked in a small town just about two hours further ahead. As I kept driving, I noticed a small light coming up in my mirror. It was the headlights of someone behind me which was actually the first person I'd seen on the road with me in over an hour. Their lights were getting bigger quickly though, showing they were coming up on me really fast. Soon, I could see it was a large van of some sort. This was only a one lane road, so I couldn't get out of their way even if I wanted to. I figured they would still swerve around me though, given they were going so fast. Once they reached the back of my car, they matched my speed and stayed right behind me. After a few moments, I realized they weren't trying to get around me at all. We drove like that for almost 10 minutes. It was kind of unnerving being that it was only us on that road. Yet this huge van was just tailing right behind me. It wasn't a normal following distance either. They were so close to me that I couldn't even see their front bumper or their license plate. Maybe I was a bit quick to feel uneasy about it. But an exit came up for a gas station, and I chose to turn off, hoping they would stay on the road, that I could put some distance between us. As I veered off down the ramp, though, they stayed right behind me. I pulled into the gas station and parked at one of the pumps. The van pulled into the pump right behind me. At this point, I didn't know what was happening. Part of me thought this was something bad, but another part of me thought I might just be overreacting. This was the only gas station in the past 30 minutes, so it wasn't that unlikely they would need gas as well. Before I shut my car off, I looked around the store. Part of the gas station had its lights out and a closed sign hanging from the door. I looked to the sides of it, seeing nothing but empty darkness. No houses, no buildings, just a field covered in snow with a single road going through it. I looked in my mirror. A man was now standing outside the van and putting gas in. I got out and began doing the same as the numb slowly ticked on the gas meter. The man quickly put his pump back and sealed his gas cap. I looked over, seeing him walking to the back of his van. Then I heard the loud ratcheting sound of the back door being lifted open. There was something in that moment, maybe a gut feeling or just an instinct of some kind. It told me that I needed to get out of there right now. I pulled the pump out of my car and not even a second later, three men jumped out the back of the van and began sprinting right at me. I dropped that pump on the ground and quickly got in my car, locking the doors just as one of them grabbed the handle. He tried to rip it open. I was shaking and moving as quick as I could to get the car on. All three of them surrounded me trying each door, but then immediately sprinted back to their van before I'd even had the chance to pull away. When I did, though, I saw them drive away first, going in the opposite direction, back down the way we had come from. 
I let the police know what happened, but I never even got a call back with any updates. I think it's obvious they were trying to abduct people under the cover of night on this vast, unpopulated highway. What's terrifying is how confident, or for lack of a better word, professional the whole operation seemed. As soon as they realized I was securely in my car, and it wasn't going to be effortless to grab me, they fled immediately, without even needing to communicate with each other. It was like they had done this many times before. What would have happened if they had gotten me? I don't know. But I urge everyone to learn from my mistakes, because you may not be as lucky as I was. This took place in an abandoned house in Gunma Prefecture. Some of you may have heard of this house before. The abandoned house is known as the Mannequin's House. It's a very old Western-style home. For all I know, it's still standing, but I'll never go back there. A lot of people say that no one should go upstairs in that house. There are two mannequins up there that are so lifelike, they feel real. The urban legend is they'll attack and chase anyone who goes up there. This is my experience in the mannequin house. My good friend, let's call him Jay, told me about the mannequin house and said he'd been there once. He claimed he went inside and saw one of the mannequins peeping at him from the top of the stairs. Needless to say, he ran for it. When he told me this story, all it did was make me curious. I wanted to go there and see it for myself. I mean, wouldn't you? It's such an outlandish story. Obviously, Jay said he didn't really want to go there again, but I eventually persuaded him. We had a mutual. A strange tapping noise coming from the window. It was rhythmic, like someone tapping their fingers impatiently. We froze, exchanging nervous glances. Bay's expression was pale, his eyes wide with fear. What? What is that? I whispered my voice barely audible over the sound of our pounding hearts. B shook his head, his lips trembling. I don't know. It can't be. It can't be. The tapping grew louder, more insistent. It sounded like it was coming from all around us, as if the entire house was surrounded by unseen hands rapping against the windows and walls. We have to do something. Jay said, his voice shaky but determined. But before we could move, the tapping abruptly stopped. The sudden silence was deafening, suffocating. Then, from somewhere outside, we heard a low, guttural voice. It was barely more than a whisper, but it carried a chilling menace that sent shivers down our spines. Let me in. He whimpered clutching the bedsheets tightly. We have to call the police. But as he reached for his phone, the voice spoke again, louder this time, filled with a primal hunger that froze us in terror. Let me in, or I'll come for you. With a trembling hand, B dialed 911. His voice barely above a whisper as he explained our situation to the dispatcher. We huddled together in terrified silence, praying for help to arrive before whatever was outside could fulfill its sinister promise. Minutes stretched into eternity as we waited, each second feeling like an eternity. And then finally, we heard the distant wail of sirens drawing closer. Relief flooded through us as we realized that help was on the way. But even as the sound of approaching footsteps echoed through the house, a part of me couldn't shake the feeling that whatever had been tapping at our windows was still out there, lurking in the darkness, waiting for its chance to strike. As the police burst through the door, flooding the room with light, I couldn't help but wonder what had we stumbled upon in that abandoned house? And more importantly, 
Was it truly gone? Or was this just the beginning of something far more sinister? Few minutes, but everything looked the same. The trees towered overhead, their branches casting eerie shadows as the sun began to set. Panic started to set in as I realized I was lost in the woods, with no idea which direction to go. I tried calling out for help, but my voice seemed to get swallowed by the dense foliage around me. Fear gnawed at my stomach as I imagined all sorts of terrifying scenarios. What if I encountered a wild animal? What if I stumbled upon something even more sinister lurking in the shadows? With each passing minute, the forest seemed to grow darker, more foreboding. I could feel the weight of the trees pressing in on me, suffocating me with their oppressive silence. Just when I was on the verge of despair, I heard a sound in the distance. It was faint at first, barely more than a whisper on the wind. But as I strained my ears, I realized it was the sound of voices, heart pounding with hope. I followed the sound, pushing my way through the underbrush until I stumbled into a clearing. And there, to my immense relief, stood my uncle and my parents, frantically calling my name. I rushed into their arms, tears streaming down my face as I clung to them, grateful beyond words to be found. My uncle scolded me gently for wandering off, but his relief was evident as he hugged me tight. As we made our way back to the house, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that lingered in the back of my mind. Being lost in the woods had been a terrifying experience, one that I never wanted to repeat. From that day on, I made sure to stick close to my family whenever we visited my uncle's house. And though the memory of that harrowing adventure still sends shivers down my spine, it also serves as a reminder of the importance of staying safe and never venturing too far into the unknown. Anyone matching the description I gave him, we were all puzzled and unnerved by the encounter. Who was that mysterious man? And what was he doing wandering through the woods behind my uncle's house? The incident left me shaken to the core. And from that day on, I never ventured into those woods alone again. The fear of encountering that stranger haunted me. A constant reminder of the dangers that lurked in the unknown. As the years passed, the memory of that day faded into the background of my mind, overshadowed by the busyness of life and the passage of time. But every now and then, when I find myself alone in the woods or walking down a deserted trail, a shiver runs down my spine, and I can't help but wonder, what if I had never made it back? What if that encounter had ended differently? I may never know the answers to those questions, but one thing is for certain. I'll always be grateful for the stroke of luck that led me safely back to my uncle's house that day. And I'll never forget the lesson I learned about the importance of staying safe and vigilant, especially when venturing into the great unknown. Found out to be a stab wound in his side Jeremy was sitting against the wall, visibly shaken, but thankfully uninjured. The two intruders were nowhere to be seen. Panic surged through me as I realized the severity of the situation. We needed to get help, fast. Jay called 911 while I frantically searched for anything to stop Jim's bleeding. By the time the paramedics arrived, Jim was pale and barely conscious. They rushed him to the hospital while the police swarmed the apartment, searching for any clues that could lead to the apprehension of the assailants. In the aftermath of the attack, our sense of security was shattered. How had those men gotten into the building? Why had they targeted Jeremy? And most importantly, were they 
still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for their next victim. Despite the fear and uncertainty that now clouded our lives, we refused to let ourselves be consumed by it. We rallied around Jim, supporting him as he recovered from his injuries and vowed to never let our guard down again. But the memory of that terrifying night still haunts me. A constant reminder of the dangers that lurk just beyond our doorstep. And though we may never know the true motives of those who sought to harm us, we remain vigilant, determined to protect ourselves and those we love from whatever darkness may lie ahead lights and sparse foot traffic. It was peaceful, calming almost, to stroll through the quiet streets under the veil of darkness. But one night, as I was nearing the halfway point of my walk, something felt off. A prickling sensation crawled up my spine, a nagging sense of unease that I couldn't shake. I glanced around, but everything seemed normal. The streets empty, still. Brushing off my unease as paranoia, I continued on my usual route, trying to focus on the podcast playing through my headphones. But the feeling of being watched persisted, growing stronger with each step I took. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of movement. It was subtle, almost imperceptible, but it was enough to send a shiver down my spine. I quickened my pace, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to see what had caught my attention. And that's when I saw him, a shadowy figure lurking in the darkness of an alleyway, watching me with cold, calculating eyes. Panic surged through me as I realized I was being followed, hunted like prey in the dead of night. Instinct took over as I broke into a run, my heart racing as I sprinted through the empty streets, the sound of my own footsteps echoing in my ears. I didn't dare to look back, knowing that he was still there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for his chance to strike. I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of my own doorstep, breathless and trembling with fear. I fumbled with my keys, my hands shaking as I struggled to unlock the door, praying that he wouldn't catch up to me before I could escape. And then, finally, the door swung open, and I stumbled inside, slamming it shut behind me with a sense of relief so overwhelming it was almost suffocating. I collapsed against the wall gasping for breath as I realized just how close I had come to danger. That night, as I lay in bed, my heart still pounding with adrenaline, I couldn't shake the feeling of fear that had settled over me like a shroud. I knew that I would never be able to forget the terror of being stalked through the darkness. A reminder that even in the safety of my own hometown, danger could lurk just beyond the streetlights. Decided to check out and head back on my walk, but as I left the store and resumed my usual route, a sinking feeling settled in the pit of my stomach. It was as if a shadow had fallen over me, casting a pall of unease over the once familiar streets. I quickened my pace, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that seemed to cling to me like a shroud. But no matter how fast I walked, the feeling persisted, growing stronger with each step I took. And then, just as I rounded a corner, I saw him again, the man in the puffy blue coat, his face obscured by the mask, standing at the end of the street, watching me with those same cold, calculating eyes. Panic surged through me as I realized he had followed me, tracked me to this secluded spot in the dead of night. 
My mind raced with fear as I tried to think of what to do. Should I confront him? Call for help? Or should I just run? Run as fast as I could and never look back. But before I could make a decision, he started walking towards me. His movements slow and deliberate, like a predator stalking its prey. Instinct took over as I turned and fled, my footsteps echoing in the empty streets as I raced towards the safety of my home. I didn't dare to look back, didn't dare to see if he was still following me. All I could think about was escaping, escaping from the terror that pursued me through the darkness. A nightmare come to life on the streets of my own hometown. And when I finally reached the safety of my doorstep, breathless and trembling with fear, I vowed never to venture out on those night walks again. For in the darkness of the night, danger lurked, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting prey. And I had narrowly escaped its clutches by the skin of my teeth. Rising into the sky, obscuring the surrounding buildings, and casting an eerie pall over the neighborhood. I could hear the frantic shouts of people below, the sound of sirens wailing in the distance as emergency responders raced to the scene. Fear clenched at my heart as I realized the severity of the situation. I knew I had to act fast if I wanted to escape unscathed. Without hesitation, I grabbed my keys and wallet stuffing them into my pocket as I made my way to the stairwell. But as I descended the stairs, the smoke grew thicker, denser, until it was nearly impossible to see more than a few feet in front of me. I coughed and choked on the acrid fumes, my lungs burning with each breath as I struggled to find my way to safety. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I reached the ground floor, only to be met with chaos and confusion. People were running in every direction, their faces twisted in panic and fear as they fought to escape the engulfing smoke. I pushed my way through the crowd, my heart pounding in my chest as I searched for a way out. And then, just as I was about to lose hope, I spotted it a door, slightly ajar, leading to the street outside. With a surge of adrenaline, I pushed through the door and stumbled out into the open air, gasping for breath as I gulped in the fresh, clean air. I collapsed to my knees, my body shaking with relief as I realized I had escaped the inferno unscathed. But as I looked back at the burning building, my heart sank with the knowledge that not everyone had been so lucky. I could only pray for the safety of those still trapped inside, hoping against hope that they would find a way to escape the flames that raged around them. In the days that followed, I learned the full extent of the tragedy that had unfolded that fateful morning. Dozens of people had lost their lives in the fire their names forever etched in the annals of history as victims of a senseless tragedy. And as I stood amidst the charred ruins of the Jungongnyo station, I vowed to never forget the lives that had been lost, to honor their memory by living my own life to the fullest, cherishing each moment as if it were my last. For in the blink of an eye, everything can change, and it is up to us to make the most of the time we have been given. They tried to stop him, but he quickly ignited the flammable liquid, causing a massive fireball to erupt inside the train car. The flames spread rapidly, engulfing the entire carriage in a matter of seconds. Panic ensued as passengers scrambled to escape the inferno, but many were trapped inside, unable to find a way out. 
the smoke and flames quickly overwhelmed them, leaving them with no chance of survival. As the train pulled into Yungongyo Station, the doors opened, allowing the fire to spread to the platform and beyond. The thick smoke billowed out into the station, causing chaos and confusion as people struggled to evacuate. Firefighters and emergency responders rushed to the scene, battling the blaze and rescuing those who were trapped inside the burning train. But despite their efforts, dozens of lives were lost in the tragedy, leaving behind a trail of devastation and heartbreak. In the aftermath of the fire, questions were raised about the safety and security measures in place at the station, as well as the mental health support available to individuals like Han who were struggling with depression and suicidal ideation. But amidst the grief and loss, there were also stories of heroism and resilience as ordinary people stepped up to help their fellow passengers in their time of need. And while the scars of that fateful day may never fully heal, the community came together to support one another and rebuild in the face of adversity. As for me, I couldn't shake the feeling of horror and disbelief at the events that had unfolded just a stone's throw away from where I stood. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing every moment we have, for we never know when tragedy may strike. Could swim without any interruptions or worries about other people around one summer day. When I was about 12 years old, my cousin and I were swimming in the river as usual. It was a hot day and the cool water felt refreshing against our skin. We were splashing around and having a great time when suddenly we heard a loud noise coming from the nearby woods. At first we thought it might be a wild animal or maybe even another person. But as the noise grew louder, we realized it was something much more unsettling. It sounded like a low guttural growl mixed with heavy breathing. My cousin and I exchanged nervous glances and quickly made our way out of the water. We grabbed our towels and started to walk back towards my grandmother's house. But as we did, the noise seemed to follow us. It was getting closer and closer, and soon we could hear branches snapping and leaves rustling in the woods. Behind us, we started to run as fast as we could, but the noise kept pace with us. No matter how fast we ran it, it was like whatever was following us it was always just behind us. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as we ran through the woods. My cousin and I were both terrified and we didn't know what to do. Finally, we reached my grandmother's house and burst through the door, gasping for breath. We told her what had happened, but she just laughed and said it was probably just a wild animal looking for food. She didn't seem too concerned my cousin and I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over us. We spent the rest of the day inside the safety of the house, and we never went swimming in that spot again. It was a summer day that I'll never forget. And to this day, I still wonder what it was that was following us in the woods. Performing at, I decided to go for a walk since there wasn't much else to do in the area. As I walked along the road, I noticed a small path leading into the woods. Out of sheer curiosity, I decided to follow it. The path was narrow and overgrown with vegetation, but I pressed on as I walked deeper into the woods. I began to feel a sense of unease, like I was being watched. I brushed it off 
It's just my imagination running wild in the quiet forest. Suddenly, I stumbled upon a clearing in the woods, and what I saw made my blood run cold. There, in the center of the clearing, was a circle of stones arranged in a perfect circle. It looked like some kind of ritualistic site, and my mind immediately jumped to thoughts of witchcraft and dark magic. I felt a chill run down my spine as I stood there taking in the eerie scene. Then I heard a rustling in the bushes behind me, and without thinking, I turned and ran as fast as I could. Back to the road, I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of the conference venue when I told my wife what I had seen. She laughed it off and said, I had probably stumbled upon some kids playing pretend in the woods, but I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over me. I'll never forget that day and I still wonder what was really going on in those woods. Presenting at an old church retreat camp, one of her presentations ran way over time. So the lodge's cafeteria was already closed by the time she finished, with no car, no phone, and this remote area offering no mobile coverage or vending machines. The only option was to trek to the nearest town for food. Equipped with a coat and flashlight, the trip down was uneventful. Along the highway, around midnight, I managed to snag a pizza, but the journey back took a dark turn. A severe feeling of discomfort engulfed me, as if unseen eyes bore into my back. In the midst of the woods, my first thought was of a wild animal stalking me. Aware that most predators strike from above or behind, I illuminated my path with the phone light, keeping it trained behind me, sweeping my flashlight up and down. I trudged onward, rustlings echoing first from one side, then directly behind. Maintaining a steady pace, I feigned composure, though terror gripped me wholly. Just before reaching the site, the eerie sensation dissipated, and the forest fell silent. Back at the camp, my wife and I devoured the pizza and retired for the night. However, the tranquility was shattered two days later by a shocking revelation from the news. A homeless woman had been found less than 1,500 yards away. From our site, she had been mauled and eaten, seemingly by a cougar attack. The area where she was killed matched the spot where estimates placed me on the night I ventured out for pizza. A few years back, my best friend and I hit up Adams Morgan, a bustling strip of bars and clubs in DC on a Saturday night. With the area teeming with people, parking was a nightmare, forcing us to leave our car blocks away in a random back alley. As we strolled down the dimly lit alley, I noticed a man with a backpack trailing several yards behind us. Initially, I shrugged it off, but when I glanced back again moments later, he had closed the gap significantly. My heart quickened, and I urged my friend to pick up the pace. Suddenly, I looked back once more to find the man sprinting full throttle towards us. Panic seized me, and I clutched my friend's hand, breaking into a desperate sprint down the alley with the assailant hot on our heels. Chasing us relentlessly, we found ourselves darting into the chaotic flow of DC traffic, narrowly avoiding collisions with speeding cars. It felt surreal, like a scene ripped from a thriller movie. Miraculously, we made it across the bustling six-lane street unharmed, our hearts pounding with adrenaline. Across the street, we watched as the mysterious pursuer glared menacingly at us for a fleeting moment before abruptly turning away and vanishing into the darkness of the alley. To this day, the motive behind that harrowing chase remains a perplexing enigma. 
leaving us with a chilling sense of unease and unanswered questions. As we reflect on these eerie encounters, one thing remains abundantly clear. The world is full of inexplicable mysteries and spine-tingling moments that defy explanation. Whether it's a terrifying brush with a predator in the wilderness, or a heart-pounding chase through the bustling streets of the city, the unknown lurks around every corner, ready to send shivers down our spines. Yet, amidst the uncertainty, we find strength in our resilience and the bonds of friendship that guide us through the darkest of nights. So, let us tread cautiously, but with unwavering courage, as we continue to navigate the enigmatic tapestry of life, forever vigilant and forever curious about the shadows that dance at the edge of our perception. <laughs>